ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا my dear brothers and sisters in islam indeed the topic which we all are aware of the topic which the muslims around the world are speaking about the affair of our beloved brothers and sisters in palestine so we want to remind our brothers and sisters of certain points related to that affair and related to the affair of calamities within the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as we understand our religion is a complete religion so anything that takes place in the religion of islam there is guidance there is guidance as it relates to calamities just like there is guidance as it relates to worship and the like so we want to remind ourselves of some of the guidelines as it relates to affairs that afflict the ummah from those guidelines is that when we speak we speak with knowledge is when we speak we speak with knowledge allah azza wa jalla says in the quran wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilm inna as-sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula allah azza wa jalla says in the quran and do not speak without knowledge do not speak without knowledge indeed the hearing and the sight and the heart will be questioned and allah azza wa jalla says in the quran wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun allah azza wa jalla says in the quran and to speak about your lord that which you do not have knowledge of so the believers when we are afflicted with calamities any calamity we take our time and we seek knowledge we do not want to cause more harm to the religion than is already present likewise allah azza wa jalla says in surah an-nisa واذا جاءهم امر من الخوف او الامن اذاعوا به ولو ردوه الى الرسول والى اولي الامر منهم لعلمه الذين يستنبتونه منه الله عز وجل says in surah an-nisa when an affair of safety or security afflicts them they spread it some of the individuals they spread it they start speaking in gatherings giving their opinion given what they believe speaking about what's on social media or speaking about what's on the news allah azza wa jalla said but if they were to refer to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to those of authority from amongst them they would teach them or explain to them the affairs so the way of the believers is that we refer back to the people of knowledge we refer back to the people of knowledge the people that have experience and knowledge in these affairs Sheikh Abdul Rahman Al-Sa'di rahmatullahi alayhi says and some of these explanations we won't read them in Arabic because we want to save time he said this is an admonition from Allah this is an admonition from Allah that they would do something which is not befitting and that and if an affair if an important affair takes place from good or bad that which relates to happiness or fear that they take their time that they do not rush in fact they refer back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to the people of knowledge the people of advice the people of understanding those who know the affairs that which is harmful and that which is beneficial so my dear brothers from the ways of the muslims is that we don't just go and start speaking about affairs that we don't know My dear brothers and sisters many of the muslims don't take time to read many of the muslims don't study the history of islam what's going on in palestine many of the muslims don't know but they look at something online or they look at the news and then they begin to give their own opinion since when was the news a reliable source of information since when was social media a reliable source 
for information, especially in the light of the fact that it's owned by the Jews. Especially the fact that it's owned by the Jews. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to return our affairs back to the book of Allah and the son of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another important reminder as it relates to what our brothers and sisters are witnessing in Palestine is the fact that we feel their pain. We feel their pain. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Allah says in Surah Al-Hujurat, the believers are brothers. And the Prophet wasallam said in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Ad-Nu'man bin Bashir, مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراهمهم وتعاطفهم مثل الجسد الواحد إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسحر والحمى. The Prophet wasallam said, the example of the believers in their love, in their mercy, in their concern is like one body. If one part of the body is hurt, then the rest of the body feels that pain. The rest of the body is sick. So my dear brothers, from faith is that we have concern and love for our brothers and sisters. If there are those from amongst us that claim to be believers, when the ummah is afflicted, whether it's in Palestine, or whether it's in Bosnia, or whether it's in India, or whether it's in China, or whether it's in Burma, or whether it's in Russia, if the ummah is afflicted, we have to feel their pain. We have to be concerned. How can the Muslims go to sleep at night comfortably knowing that Muslims are being oppressed around the world. That Muslims are being oppressed around the world. The Prophet wasallam said, as is reported in Bukhari on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ الْمُؤْمِنِ كَالْبُلْيَانِ يَشُدُّ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا The Prophet wasallam said, the believer to the believer is one structure. We support one another. And then the Prophet wasallam joined his fingers. So my dear brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean, wallahi, there's no value for ethnicity amongst the believers. There's no value of passports amongst the believers. Or I am Saudi, or I'm Afriki, or I'm Nigeria. It means nothing to us. When you come into the fold of Islam, you are our brother, no matter where you are. No matter what language you speak, no matter what ethnicity you carry, you are our brother and we feel your pain, my dear brothers and sisters. Another affair that the Muslims must understand, and it's important for all of us to understand, is that Allah Azza wa Jal will test the believers. Allah Azza wa Jal from his sunnah and from his way is that he will test the believers. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Ankabut, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ الصَّدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Ankabood, Do the people feel that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be tested? Indeed, we tested those who came before them. And Allah will make it known those who are truthful, and Allah will make it known those who are liars. And Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُولُ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَعْلَمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ وَيَعْلَمَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Ali Imran, Do you think that you will enter paradise and Allah has not made it known those who fight in His cause and those who are patient? And Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالدَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَ مَتَى نَصْرَ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Do you think that you will enter paradise and you have not been afflicted with the afflictions of those who came before you? 
They were afflicted with calamities and poverty and earthquakes until the messenger and the believers with him said, when will the help of Allah come? Then Allah says, indeed the help of Allah is close. So my brothers and sisters, we will be afflicted with calamities. Being a believer is not a bed of roses. It's not an easy path. If we read the Quran, yes, take it off our shelf, dust it off. A book that is not only read in Ramadan, a book that is read every day in the life of the believer and acted upon. Allah Azza wa mentions the trials and tribulations of the believers. The people of Nuh, the people of Ibrahim, the people of Musa, the people of Dawood, the people of Suleiman, the people of Isa, and continue. They were afflicted with trials and tribulations. It is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ لَا بُدْ أَنْ يَبْتَلِعَ إِبَادَهُ Hafidh ibn Kathir said in his book of Tafsir, he said, these verses inform us that Allah will indeed test his servants. And it was mentioned by Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi rahmatullahi alayhi in his book of Tafsir. He said, وَلَكِنْ سُنَّتُهُ وَعَادَتُهُ He said, the sunnah of Allah and the way of Allah is that he tested the previous nations and he will test this nation. Allah will test them with good and bad and ease and difficulty, things they like, things they dislike, poverty and richness. And Allah will test them by way of their enemy. Allah will test them in statements and actions. So my dear brothers, it is the sunnah of Allah. It is the way of Allah. And it does not change. وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا Allah says in the Quran, you will not find the way of Allah to change. And Allah will not modify His way. Allah Azza wa Jal would test His servants. Allah Azza wa Jal would see, are we honest? We say we believe. We say we love the believers. We say we are brothers. Do we feel anything? Do we do anything? Do we increase in our worship? Do we make dua? Do we stop sinning? Let's ask ourselves those questions, my dear brothers and sisters. Another thing that we remind ourselves, and indeed the reminder benefits the believer, is that even when Allah tests you, Allah does it because He wants you to turn to Him. Allahu Akbar. When Allah tests you, Allah does it because He wants you to return to Him. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Baqarah, my dear brothers and sisters, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal said, Indeed, we will test you with fear and hunger and loss of wealth and death and crops and give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those when they are afflicted with the calamity, they say we come from Allah and we're going to return to Allah. So they return to Allah. They think about Allah. They seek forgiveness from Allah. They rectify themselves, my dear brothers and sisters. Another point. If we understand that Allah wants us to return to Him, then what are we going to do, my dear brothers and sisters? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, and this point, my dear brothers we have and sisters, we have to realize what have we done to cause this calamity? Ask yourself. Let's ask ourselves. What have we done to cause this calamity? Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Imran, "Awalamma asabatkum musibatun qad asabtum mithlaha, qultum anna hada qul huwa min indi anfusikum." Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Imran, "When a calamity has befallen you, and you've done something similar, and this was when the Sahaba radiyallahu taalaanhum had fought the Kufar in Badr." And then in Uhud, the Muslims disobeyed the Prophet, so they were afflicted with death. 
The Sahaba said, where is this from? How could this happen to us? How could this happen to us? Like we say now, why is this happening? How could this happen? Where did this come from? What does Allah say? Say it is from you. Say it is from you. Allah Azawajal says in the Quran, وَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسُهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Allah says in the Quran, Allah did not oppress you. You oppressed yourselves. Allah Azawajal says in Surah An-Nisa, مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهُ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Allah Azawajal says in Surah An-Nisa, whatever comes to you of good, it is from Allah. And whatever comes to you of calamity, of trials, it is from you. Shaykh Salah al-Luhaydan, rahimahullah ta'ala said, المسلمون ضيعوا المشجد الأقصى قديما عندما أضاعوا أمور دينهم. Look at this, subhanallah. Shaykh Salah al-Luhaydan, who just died last year, or the year before, rahimahullah ta'ala said, the Muslims, they are the ones who lost Masjid al-Aqsa when they turned away from their religion. When they turned away from their religion, the Prophet ﷺ said, as is reported in Ahmed and Abu Dawood, on the authority of Ibn Umar, our beloved Messenger ﷺ said, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَأَخَذْتُمْ أَذْنَابَ الْبَقْرِ وَرَدِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعِ وتراتم الجهاد صلّى الله عليكم ذلا لا ينزعه شيء حتى ترجع إلى دينكم. Allah Azza wa Jal said, when you use interest and you take the tails of the cows, يعني you focusing on the dunya and you love the crops and you abandon fighting in the way of Allah, Allah would bring upon you an enemy. Who will humiliate you and debase you, and Allah will not remove it until you return to your religion. Allah Azza wa Jal will not will not remove it until you return to your religion. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to turn to our religion. We have to realize that we are the cause of it. The Muslims around the world are the cause of it. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tansur Allah, yansurukum. Allah Azza wa Jal said, O oh, you who believe, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. And Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Hajj, Wala yansuranna Allah, man yansuruhu. Allah will help those who help Him. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to realize, we have to reflect we have to take responsibility. What have we done to cause this calamity upon our brothers and our sisters? My dear brothers and sisters, indeed, the help of Allah is close, but we have to return to our religion. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد ومن ولا الله عز وجل says in the Quran in Surah Rum ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعد الذي عملوا ولعلهم يرجعون الله عز وجل said in Surah Rum that oppression calamity Evil has spread in the land and on the waters because of that which the hands of the people have brought forward. So that they can taste some of what they have done and so that they can return. Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi said they should return from their actions that they have done to cause the calamity. They should correct their affairs they should be upright in their religion. 
And then he said, glory be to Allah who has blessed them by testing them. Glory be to Allah who has blessed them by testing them. Because if Allah was to hold them accountable for their deeds, he would not leave anyone upon the earth. He would not leave anyone upon the earth. Another matter, my dear brothers and sisters, is that Allah Azza wa Jal will not change our affair until we change ourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Ra'd, إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوء فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه من وال Allah Azza wa Jal said and this is an extremely important point my dear brothers and sisters Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Ra'd Allah will not change the affair of the people until they change themselves and if Allah wants evil for a people, no one can stop it. And you have no protector except Allah. Imam Al-Qurtubi, in his book of Tafsir, he said that Allah Azza wa Jal will not change the calamity or the harm or the evil that has afflicted the believers until they change themselves. And then he said, Either they themselves, the people that are afflicted, are doing the sin or others similar to them. And why did he say that? Because some of us say, why would Allah hold them accountable or harm them or afflict them because of me? That's an ill understanding, my dear brothers. Because aren't they a part of us? Did not the Prophet say the believers are to believers like one body? So if one body is doing it, the other body can be harmed. The other portion of the body can be harmed. Imam Al-Qurtubi said, notice what he said. He said, so Allah Azza wa Jal can punish or afflict one part of the ummah with the sins of the other part of the ummah. So look at the Muslims around the world. Look at the Muslims around the world. Music, fornication and adultery, interest, no hijab, not praying. And then we expect Allah to have mercy. We expect Allah to lift the calamity. Then Imam Ibn Qay, Imam Al-Qurtubi, he said, did not when the archers in the war of Uhud, when they were on the mountain and the Prophet told them not to move. And when the Muslims were winning and the archers came down, did not Allah afflict the full ummah? Seven, more than 70 Muslims were killed. More than 70 Sahaba killed. So Allah afflicted all of them, even though the mistake was only done by the archers. So indeed Allah Azza wa Jal would punish others if the Muslims don't return to their religion. And he mentioned another narration where there was a calamity or fear. There was fear one day and the Prophet Sallallahu came into his home and he was in a state of fear. And he said, there's a portion of the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj has been opened today. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, would Allah punish us? Even though they are righteous from amongst us? Would Allah punish us? Even though they are righteous from amongst us? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. If the evil increases, if the evil increases, Allah azza wa jal would punish us. So my dear brothers and sisters, it's upon the believers to understand this affair. It's upon the believers to return to their religion. It's upon the believers to say, ask yourself, what can I do in my deen and my obedience to Allah to help lift the calamity from my brothers and my sisters? Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, when he's speaking about the affair of Palestine 
and the affair of the Dajjal and the affair of Isa. He said, he said, the affair of the Muslims today. And by the way, Sheikh Al-Bani died over 20 years ago. But listen to this speech. The affair of the Muslim today does not show that they are ready for the help of Allah. Allahu Akbar. The affair of the Muslims today does not indicate that they are ready for the help of Allah because they have distanced themselves from that which makes them qualified for the help of Allah because they have not helped Allah. So Allah would not help them. So it is mandatory that they return to their religion so that these calamities and this humiliation would be lifted as we've been promised by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this needs to take place before the coming of the Mahdi and before the coming of Isa so that they can find that the Muslims are ready. So that they can find the Muslims are ready and that the Muslims will have might and that the Muslims will have victory and this life and the next. Allahu Akbar. My dear brothers and sisters, the victory will not come with the Muslims in this present state. And all of us are responsible for it. May Allah Azawajal give them ease. May Allah Azawajal guide us. May Allah Azawajal allow us to realize that we are the cause of this calamity. May Allah Azawajal give us might and glory when we return to Him and seek His forgiveness and seek guidance. May Allah Azawajal establish Tawheed throughout the Muslim Ummah and adherence to the Sunnah. And may Allah Azawajal forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Allah knows best wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslimin kathira.